All right, hello everyone, and welcome to episode five of Burst Mode. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Marks, and as always, here with the lovely Mr. Joseph Wood. How are you hello. this morning, Joseph? I am doing good. That is How good. Are you? I'm doing great, man. Um, so we have finally all the cameras are released. Canon, Nikon, Fuji, they're all here. No more rumors. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, h- how do they stack up? Because we, it, it's weird because a lot of people are saying you can't really compare the Fuji into the mix because it's not full frame. But uh, yeah. you know that's debatable. So, what, what, what do you think so far on um, like if if you could pick one? Well, I guess we'll get into that because you did pick one. Yeah, you did pick I did. one of them. I yeah. pre-ordered a mirrorless camera. You did. So we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what, what do you think about uh, now that all the prices are out, the specs are out? What do you think is the best way to go for someone looking for one of these? Um, none of them really blew me away. Mm-hmm. I agree. I was I was hoping maybe one of them would come out. I think Nikon has more interesting things with the Z mount yeah. and the short flange distance. Um, but Canon has those like eight kajillion focus points. That's right. That can focus in like minus six EVs. So that's pretty. Yeah, that is nuts. Impressive. Um, but Canon also has the tilty flippy screen. Which is nice, yep. but then they said screw video, Ugh. and did no no 4K 60, 720 at 120 frames per second, um, which I think even the iPhone can do like 120 at 1080 or something like that. I think but, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it can. yeah. So um, my GoPro camera can do that as well. By the way, yeah. That's, well, yeah. of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Canon's not sure if that's going to catch on. Yeah, or not, no. So. They're, they're still doing some R and D on that. Yeah. So to me, I think Nikon's more impressive, especially because they have the high end and the low end, and that seems to be easy for people to understand. With Canon, it's like, we don't know if they're going to have another high end coming out or not. There's a lot of people that seem to think that they are, but yeah, I just don't, I don't, yeah, nothing I, says that they're going to. Yeah, I don't see that. Uh, I, I, I heard no. the same thing. I heard a lot of people saying, oh, well, just, just you know, if you can get past the Z6 and the Z7, Nikon's going to come out with a, a Nikon ZZ or whatever. And the people that have said that, I haven't really found a rumor on that yet. I was like, where, where, are they, yeah, where are they getting this information? I mean, they yeah. have, a, what is the 46 megapixels, the Z7, or is it 42 or uh, something? Like I, thought, I think it was like 45 point something, just like the D850. Yeah, yeah like 45, 46, give or take, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so and what would the ZZ be? I, I don't. I, so here's the thing. I think people are wanting it to be just like the D850, or something, yeah. or like a little bit, or like better. They're wanting it to be like the next step of the D850, even though it came out yeah. semi recently, well, six, eight months, something like that. Um, I guess almost a year now, but still, there people are wanting like a D850 refresh within this full frame mirrorless line. And Nikon's not going to do that because why in the world would they no. cannibalize one of their best selling DSLRs immediately with a mirrorless camera? That they just that's yeah. that'd be a dumb move. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the people are saying they're going to come out with these pro cameras. I'm sure they eventually will. Uh, but people are literally seem to think like, oh, well guys, Photokina is in just a couple weeks. Just wait for Photokina and they're they'll be gonna, here. They're there's, not going to do it. At no, Photokina. there's no way. Cause they just released, I mean, they've, they spent so much on marketing and hyping this oh, up. Yeah. There's no way they're about to just be like, oh, right. So uh, one more thing like Steve Jobs, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, yeah, no, so, that would make no sense. That would make the Z6 and Z7 completely pointless exactly there no one would the buy the orders would drop off yeah and yeah because yeah, the, because there would no there would be no way that they would do the pro camera and then also have it at, at a competitive price range but but at no. the same time if they didn't do that then why in the world would they have a, a d850 mirrorless and then charge more for it than the d850 it would just there would be no smart yeah. business move there but yeah i yeah. i agree with you i think that um between the nikon and canon at least nikon has the something special with the Z mount that I, I really want to see flourish in the future. And I'm curious to see what, yeah. what comes with that. The new lens possibilities, the new technology they can incorporate with that. I think that has the most promising future. And then there's Fuji. And, there's Fuji. and Fuji just, uh, Fuji is Fuji. They can come in and add anything they want in free firmware updates. And they actually listen to their yep. customers and they actually know what's up in the industry. <laughs> They think video is important. They, yeah, they 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 think. Well, so the cool thing about Fuji is so this is what I'll say. When I got my XT2 well over a year ago now, um, I noticed that it was probably one of the most versatile cameras I had ever used. 
and that was cool because in the past with my DSLRs, I'd always had two. I'd always had like my slow, high resolution landscape put on a tripod and don't worry about it kind of camera. And then I had one that was like a little bit faster in case I wanted to take some portraits outside or some wildlife yeah. or whatever. And it was always like a choosing game. But with the Fuji, you just like, you just pick it up, slap on a lens, whatever, and it'll do anything. It'll do fast focusing. It'll do video. It'll do whatever. Yeah. They're very versatile cameras. Yeah, they, and you can tell that they've been making cam mirrorless cameras for a while. Yeah. Because now they're really, really, really good. And you can tell, I don't know if Canon or Nikon, if the reason why they're not the most amazing things is because it's the first time they're making mirrorless or if they just don't want to cannibalize their other products. I just don't know. Yeah, I know. I wonder the same thing. But I mean, with Fuji, Fuji sort of seems to take the Apple approach where they're like, if someone's going to cannibalize us, let's make it us. Yeah. Because, I mean, they always release a lower-end camera that has the exact same sensor as their high-end camera. Mm -hmm. It's just cheaper parts, and maybe they take out a feature or two. You know, they have the X-T2, X-T20, the X-Pro2, right. and what's the, the X-E2 or something like that. Yeah. And so, and then they made the X-E3, which is pretty awesome, too, and that's pretty cheap as well. So it's like... Yeah, the, the value, know. they're definitely the best. I would say they're probably the best right now for value for your money, what you get for what you pay for. I mean, you yeah. get a whole lot of features. Now, the, the argument still, of course, for people people that aren't in the, the Fuji fanboy community is that, oh, Fuji's not full frame, or, you know, so I'm not even going to think about them, or, uh, you know, when is Fuji going to come out with a full frame? So, in my opinion, I don't know. I mean, sure, maybe years down the road, but they kind of made the decision to skip full frame and just hit straight to, to medium format, which was smart. Yeah. Because why would you try to go into a market where the big boys, the two towers, as I like to call them, of course, yeah. Canon and Nikon, they're, they've controlled the full frame market for a long time, and now Sony is getting in on that as well. So oh, yeah. if Fuji just showed up and tried something, that would just be dumb because they're already ruling the APS-C market, and now yeah. they're slowly going to take over the medium format mirrorless. Yeah, they have a nice little niche with the APS-C mm. because they're going to have features that are comparable to the full frame. You may not get the same low light, the same... You know, background blur, defocus, and everything, but you're gonna get everything for like five, six hundred dollars cheaper than the least expensive full frame. That's right. And the image quality, for the most part, because their lenses are so good, is gonna be very, very close, if not the same. I mean, there are lots of photographers that I see on YouTube that are like thirty, forty years been doing photography with full frame and everything, and they just picked up a Fuji and they're like, holy crap! Yeah. And they just switched everything to Fuji, so. Yeah, and, and that's a, I mean that's a big part of it is you, you got to have even though it sounds weird and the, the, all the traditionalists would be like no cameras are just tools you don't have to have fun when you're shooting photos but it's like it the aesthetics and like how it feels and how it operates and if it's fun to use that really does play a big part in how creative you can get when you're using it I mean it really does oh yeah it makes you want to shoot more it makes you want to be more creative so yeah Fuji's mastered that it's they're so fun to shoot with and the way they fit oh, in your yeah. hand is awesome I, I mean I remember the, the ergonomics of those I liked a lot. Um, oh, yeah. This is a, a random topic, but since we're since we're talking about the Canon Nikon Fuji, I had firmly thought, um, and maybe I just skipped the rumor somewhere. I had thought that the Fuji XT3 was going to adopt the body style from the XH1, that bigger grip with the oh, top yeah. display. So I wonder why. I, I wonder if they just left it on the XH1 because that was supposed to be like their quote video camera, and so they thought you might want the display for more of a readout and. Maybe cinema lenses were going to be put on there, so it's a little bit of a heftier body or something. I don't know. I'm not sure why they are, why they kept it the same as the XT2. Yeah, I think. I mean, there's a big difference in size, it, especially there is. if you look at the weight. I mean, the XH1 is like maybe 150, 160 grams yeah. heavier than the XT2 right. and the XT3. XT3 I think is maybe like 60 grams heavier than the XT2, so not a very big difference. So maybe I think they want a little bit of differentiation between those two where they have the tinier, kind of more subdued body, and then they have the more pro feeling. Because the X-H1 has in-body stabilization, yeah. so you need a little bit bigger of a body for that. Right. And so, I don't know. I think maybe they... The X-H1 was weird when it came out. It was sort of like it, out of nowhere. And it's yeah, like, and it's this? like the same sensor as the X-T2. It's just yeah. had some tweaks to it. Yeah, it almost seems like, in a, like a, a jump above the X-T2, mm -hmm. but... In some ways, it's not, and so I. It's right. weird. Yeah, it's very it, strange. Yeah, so yeah, I guess that's a good point. I, it's, I'm assuming they did the bit. They had to do the bigger body because of the in-body, uh, the in-body image stabilization on the sensor. 
But yeah, yeah it's uh, I, I guess at the end of the day, it's probably I guess it's probably a smart thing they kept the XT3 the same because a lot of people love that size. So yeah. if they keep making the bigger. The XH1 is pretty much like like one of the Sony's, like the Sony A7, A7R. It's got that yeah. bigger, heftier grip on it. Um, yeah. All right. Well, so I so, think so. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say between Canon and Nikon, what is the greatest feature you think from either one of them? Like, which one mm. did they? Did any one of them have a feature where you're like, oh no, that's cool. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, okay, so with Nikon, I would say that's easier. I wasn't expecting uh, the lens mount to be like a revolutionary, um, a revolutionary feat for the future, where they can actually start making yeah. lin- better lenses and to allow more light transmission and all this other stuff that's techier than I want to to look into. But it's the I, I never knew that they could just change the mount like that, make it so much bigger, and allow for more of <coughs> more development in the future to make things better as far as lenses yeah. and all that goes. Uh, that was probably the biggest thing that stands out for me on the Nikon. The Canon, uh, it's tough because I don't know if they. I mean, I guess the amount of focus points, I guess you could say, but it, they didn't really do anything new that their other Canon cameras don't have. Um, yeah. I would say the biggest thing. For me, that I notice, which is more of a weird thing, is the whole uh, the adapter that has the drop-in filters, like the polarizers. Yeah. That's that could be cool, like we said in the future. Could be you know, it could be interesting. But yeah, that's the biggest feature that just stands out, I guess, because it's just so different. Yeah, yeah. So Z mount and the drop-in filter, definitely the most yeah. interesting things of of those two. Same here. Say. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, we still. I'm, People have had hands-on with these, but we haven't had any actual reviews of these yet. And that's the tricky thing. Is it's <laughs> like we could be looking at this, and people could be like, "Oh wow, this Canon's actually amazing," or they could be like, "Oh wow, this Z six or seven is actually amazing," or it could be like, "I ah, neither of them are really that good." Yeah, exactly. Because well, I really want to see low light on both of these guys. Yes, I want to see actual comparison side by side, all the way from like ISO one hundred to fifty thousand, yeah. hundred thousand. Yeah, I want, I want to see what they look because like. Because the A seven three is a monster in low light. And they said it might have been better than D750, I think, which was like sort of the low light king. And so I'd like to know how the Z6 with the 24 megapixels stacks up against that. Right. And Canon as well. Um, yeah, because they're, especially the Z6 price point is literally supposed to be like a direct competitor for that Sony A7 III. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of people are going to be doing comparisons on those. And, and I do want to see that Canon 24 to 70 F2 lens. Yes. Oh, I do too, man. That's... I mean, I'll never be able to afford it, at least in the near future, because <laughs> yeah. it's more expensive than the body, yes. as it you know, probably should be at 2470 F2, but I'd be interested to see how that is. That's probably going to be a new, like, oh, wedding. Oh, yeah, man. That's Because everyone uses the 2470 2.8. That's like everybody's workhorse yeah. lens for events. So, yeah, to go to a 2, I, think, I mean, I, I believe that's the first F2 2470 on the market yeah, ever. I think so. Yeah, so that's, that was, that's nuts. Um, yeah, so with... With all three of them, well, I guess with with Canon and Nikon, um, the biggest thing is I'm I'm just I'm it's gonna be curious watching them come out with their more lenses. Um, oh yeah. Just, I just want to see how they build this whole new ecosystem of the mirrorless stuff. Um, yeah. And then the Fujifilm, we don't really have to talk about. They already have great lenses at a great value. That so that yeah, it's they have great stuff. So yeah. Um, Joseph, after learning all this information, you had to choose one of these cameras. I did. Would you like to elaborate? One. Sure. <laughs> I am the least decisive person. <laughs> I think everyone is when it comes to cameras. Because yeah. you just go to the DP review forums and it's just like every other post is like, what camera should I get? And, yep. <laughs> and I went back and forth over this a million times because I was selling my D800. I was selling one of the lenses I had for about four or $500. And so I either could have gotten one of the cameras now or saved up and got the Z. I was looking at the Z6 and the Fuji, really. Mm-hmm. And I just had to go with the Fuji. There you go. And so it, it, I had sold my lens and I was waiting for that money to come through on PayPal because with eBay and PayPal, it takes like four and a half years for that money yes. to actually get released. And then you have to pay like 50% of it back to you or <laughs> yeah. something like that. And so the morning of the pre-order for the XT, uh, XT3, I wasn't going to stay up and pre-order it, but I was watching the Falcons game. Falcons game was delayed because of rain. And so it ended close to 1 a.m., I was like, ah, I'll just stay up to 1 a.m. and see if my money gets released on PayPal. So it happened to get released at exactly 1 a.m. That's insane. So that was also the X-T3 pre-orders. And so I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to do it. So I got the silver X-T3. So it goes, it reminds me of my old Knicker Matte film yeah. camera. And 
I have a black XD2 for work, so it's easier to distinguish between the two of them uh, as well. Oh, yeah. And so that's... There you go. It. Just, it was just the best. It had everything I wanted. Yeah. You know, I, the lenses are easier to afford because mm-hmm. they... I like with Fuji's lenses, they have, just like with their bodies, they have an, a more expensive version and then the cheaper version. Mm-hmm. And you don't really sacrifice a whole lot between them. So you have the 56 1.2 for like 1000 which still isn't that expensive, especially when you compare it to... You know, these full-frame lenses from Canon, which are like $2,300. Oh, yeah. And so, or they have the 50 F2, which is like $400. Right. So they have that with a bunch of the lenses. So I was like, uh, when I saw the F-Log internal 4K60 10-bit, I was like, It's okay. insane. For all for fourteen ninety nine. dollars For fourteen ninety nine. That's insane. That's it, ridiculous. It is. Well, that, yeah, so, that's, that's a good choice. I mean, if I had to choose between those... Um, now, knowing that I already have a D850, yeah, hands down, I would go with the X-T3. I mean, no doubt yeah. at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's just the way to go. All that, all those specs packed into that little body is just nuts to think about. Yeah, and then being able to focus at minus three EV instead of minus one. That was a bigger, that so. was a huge bump. Yeah, and that's going to help you a lot shooting in the auditoriums at church. All those yeah, light events. Yeah, because it's their their focus is when it gets a little darker. They they depending on the lens, it can search a lot yeah and so i do actually i do manual focus a lot now Mm. um because their manual focus peaking is just yes i just love it yeah focus peaking on the fuji so easy especially with the huge evf it was one of the easiest focus peaking uh, features to use on the the fuji cameras i used to use it on the you had the a6000 did it have it on the a6000 yeah Yeah. i've used it on the on the sony's before and i just thought it was just kind of tough to see and tough to nail focus every time it was well and with the fuji you can change the color from like red white Mm -hmm. and something else red white blue yeah and yellow i think now yellow is the new one okay yellow is is gonna have yellow which they said is a lot easier to see yeah and so that'll be nice. And they even have the old, so my old Nicker mat had the type of focusing where you would, it would split the image and mm-hmm. when you would focus, it would get them so it lines up properly. Yeah. And That's so cool. I like that a lot. And so the Fuji has that too, which I didn't I, even know. I know, I saw that. And I was like, dude, it's a little bit harder on this, on the actual manual Nicker mat. It's very, very simple to see. Mm-hmm. And on the Fuji, it's a little bit harder to tell um, how split they are, um, but it's still pretty easy, and they have a no- new one on the XT3, which is like some prism manual focus. Yes, or yeah, something yeah, I forget like that. what it's called. Yeah, I, I saw that too. It's it's crazy how they're. It's a weird looking. It, it's, it is. It's like a little circle with all these little like prisms in them or something like that. Yeah, I, I forget what they called it now. I'm gonna have to look that up or add it in the show notes. But yeah, I, I just look cool. It is. It's it's crazy how much. But that's just goes to show all those cool little things they can add. And, and the crazy thing is, even if they didn't yeah. add that now, I guarantee you a month later you'd get it in a free firmware update. <laughs> oh yeah. I just I just write up a nice little letter and be like, hey, Fuji, wouldn't it be cool if you had this? Like it would be cool. Check your <laughs> that's firmware right. update. That's right. Like, you have oh, an update goodness. right now. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they're one of the only companies. And I've I've granted I haven't used Panasonic or Olympus, but I've I've used Nikon for a long time. I used Canon for a while. And the only ones that don't do firmware upgrades, or or no, they don't they don't do firmware updates. They do upgrades so that you literally get like a new camera when you update yeah. the camera. I mean, when you, I remember I got the last firmware update I did on my XT2 was going. It gave me uh, 120 frames per second shooting on 1080 from 60. Uh, it gave me like 100 more focus points, and then on the X Pro 2, which I never owned, which is a sexy camera, by the way, just a note in there yeah, um they gave that camera 4k it didn't have 4k they just gave it 4k video through a firmware update like what i and mean i read that they now have made the firmware so that it's easier for them to copy and paste stuff from other cameras or something like that i was reading about this because somebody was talking about how they would talk to fuji and they're like yeah we're gonna put that in but it's a little bit harder i can't just copy and paste it from another camera or something like that firmware and now they've redone the firmware so that it's easier for them to copy and paste or something like that i don't know i was reading one article about that and i thought that was really interesting that it's is, like of course just... fuji would do something like yeah, that yeah that, that's fir- crazy because <laughs> normally firmwares for other cameras were just like all right i'll update my firmware and it's, yeah. it's just you know it's like bug fixes or something it, exactly like that. It's, it's all yeah it's always something it's like all that. pointless yep. and fuji's fuji former update you're like oh firmware upgrade exactly like, yeah really excited. i know there, it's like, a, there's a whole rumor community around just the firmware yeah. updates yeah because who knows what could be coming it reminds yeah. me of uh i was listening to elon musk just did the joe rogan podcast yeah i saw that and elon musk was talking about all the all the random updates they'll do to their teslas 
And I mean, it's like they wanted to go faster. He's like, all right, fine. Got an update. <laughs> That's you just know, crazy. Now I can go faster, you know. And I think he said they're working on, I don't know if they're working on it or they had it, where you, um, they're going to have an Atari emulator in it. What? So you can play like Asteroids and That's stuff. That's awesome. And then he oh, says man. apparently there's an Easter egg where the car can dance. You just have to figure out how to do it. This is God. It's just nuts. crazy. Yeah. So, but yeah, so that's with that kind of seat. That's where with that kind of technology existing, and if Fujifilm can do it, and all these other companies. Yeah. When, when is Canon and Nikon gonna finally figure out something like to just do something a little bit different than they've always done? You know, that's that's yeah. why like I love the Z6 and the Z7. Like the the like it's I like the potential. The potential I can see it. Uh, Canon, not really sure what they're doing. They'll somewhat they'll they'll find their potential eventually, but. Uh, why can't they just try something different? Even if it fails, like I would still rather them try something and fail and then yeah. at least like get to see a little bit of the potential there. Uh, but yeah, like why? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah, they're, well, I mean, they're, they're getting their foot in the door. Yeah. And, you know, they'll probably still be making DSLRs for, you know, seven, ten years likely. I'm but, sure, yeah. Because you can't just stop. There's no way they can just stop. There's no. too much in that community. But, uh, yeah, I think if they, I think they're probably hesitantly walking through that door to see what their sales are going to be and to see if, you know, what the response will be from their initial offerings. I think Nikon put out more interesting initial, initial offerings, especially with the price point. Yes. And the lenses look more kind of affordable than Canon's. Canon's is going to be a beast, but it's like they're they're clearly betting on you using the EF lenses. That's right. Because um, they show tons and tons of pictures and things from them using EF lenses instead of the RF because all their RF lenses are like two thousand dollars or more except for the thirty five one point eight. Yeah, and there's tons of Canon EF lenses, all the the L glass that just still yeah perfectly acceptable. I mean, awesome quality oh, and it's great lenses. Yeah, and it's just it's not that price point. <laughs> yeah, I, it Canon's just I'm telling you, Canon is CBS. They have <laughs> yeah. really good shows that have forty five seasons each show. But you're never really dying to watch any one of those shows. Yep. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're not like, hey, I really want to watch NCIS. Yep. <laughs> but if it's on, you'll watch it, and you'll watch it for five hours straight. So it's like, all right. That's that's pretty much it. You nailed it. I'm telling you. Yep. I'm telling you. I'm all right. right so, so you chose the X-T3. When you get X-T3. that in, man, we're going to have to do uh, a different. We'll have to meet up. Yeah, we'll have to do, so we'll have to do an actual video in the field with it instead of just a podcast. Yeah. So we'll have to meet up we'll and do, do some uh I don't know, maybe meet over at Amicalola Falls or something, or yeah. go somewhere up in North Georgia here. Do something. We'll go to them. Biggin's Barbecue again. Oh, man, that place was so good. Gosh. Get them to sponsor our show. Oh, dude, why? <laughs> why haven't we thought of that yet? Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, man. Awesome. A- anyone that's not in the South that's listening or watching, the we have barbecue restaurants probably every couple of miles here in uh, yeah. in Georgia. I live in northern Georgia. I guess you live in technically northern Georgia, too. Yeah, just um, a little bit north of Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, man, this the this barbecue place we went to when we went to sh- shoot this waterfalls and we found Jurassic Park basically that day. By the oh, way, yeah. let's every time we go and in, in, on a photo adventure day, we always find like another world. Uh, like we oh, yeah, we'll find some crazy. random place down a dirt road that'll just lead to another world. But yeah, we went to this barbecue place and we had the brisket and cheddar sandwich. Oh man, that is a Southern boys feast, and it was good, man. It was massive, and they gave you like the fried okra and everything. It was huge. The oh. plate was massive. It was just oh. awesome, and it was it was like nine bucks or something. Yeah, like that. that's it was right. Pretty Biggins, cheap. Biggins barbecue. That's where it's at. I got my hat there. You did, dude. Yes, I need you to wear that next are, show. I was about to say, you'll already have that for when they sponsor the show. Because <laughs> I'm wearing my yeah, oh yeah, the Chumley hat. Chumley that's right hat, from the yeah. Pawn Stars shop that I got you. That's, that's right. right. Sweet. All right. Um, let's see. So you are going somewhere I am. tomorrow or uh, Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Yeah. So today's what is today? Tomorrow. Tuesday. Yeah. Today's, today's Tuesday. Tuesday. We're going uh, on a family vacation on Thursday. Um, a place it, you've never been before. Never been before. Disney World. <laughs> no. <laughs> I go. Third I go. Time this year. It's pretty much my second home. Yeah. It's my third time this year. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I love. We're we're theme park people for sure. And, uh, yeah, I'm taking uh, a new camera that I was able to get my hands yeah. on. Uh, yeah, so I, I recently got... T3i. T- <laughs> You're going to put it through its paces. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The, I was able to get myself, or get my hands on a BlackBerry. So I'm taking the cool. new BlackBerry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So well, you got a three camera. <laughs> yes, I did. it's not the T3i. No, it's not. It's the Sony A7R three. 
Dude. With the 24 to 70 Sony Zeiss lens, the F4 Jeez. lens. I know. That little blue Zeiss tag. Every yeah. time I see that, I get a little excited. Oh, man. And it's a... Uh, <sighs> It, it, I mean, it ultimately, without, you know, I mean, there's not a place for my pinky, and there's a couple things that I'd rather see, but it feels good. I mean, it's a good-looking camera. It looks it looks like it's from the future, which I like. Like, it's got that good yeah. good look. It's got a huge... That little red ring. I love that little red yeah, ring. Yeah, yeah. And it's got That's a... so cool. It's got a huge EVF. Um, I've only taken, like, two or three pictures with it so far, because I just got it yesterday evening. And yeah. the the... Just holding it, the biggest thing I've noticed about it is the joystick on the back for focusing. It's huge. Yeah. Like it's, oh, it's oh like, yeah, that is. It, that yeah, looks like a it's dial. Like, yeah, it's like four times the size of any of the other oh, wow. buttons. Yeah, and it's so nice to use. So, yeah, um, I basically just recently got a uh, into a partnership with B and H Photo where they can send me some stuff every thirty days, and I can have a completely unbiased review on it. I'm glad that I was able to to get in with the camera store because. A lot of like specific brands will reach out to me sometimes, and when you do that, you always have that like pressure that you like should say something good about it, you know, even if yeah. it's not so good. And I don't like doing that because you know when you're working with the brand, if you say something bad, it's gonna like hurt their feelings, and they might not want to partner with you again, kind of thing. Yeah. So the fact that I can centralize everything at a camera store now, it's like if I say I hate Sony, who cares? They sell Nikon and they sell Canon, so it doesn't really matter. So I always like to just yeah. remain super unbiased. And so, yeah, this is the way I can do that. And, and everybody loves B&H. That's right. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like the B&H and Adorama yeah. are, like, the, the two biggest online retailers yeah. for that. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be fun to, to get my hands on some stuff. And when I get back from Disney World, me and you need to get together and shoot with yeah. your X-T3 and with this yeah. thing. Dude. And I'll bring along my Nikon D850. We'll have the D850, the A7R3, and the X-T3. Have we ever done two consecutive outings where we both have had the same camera? Oh, man. Probably. Like, I feel like every time we yeah. go out to go shoot, you have a new camera or I have a new camera. Yeah, it's always something like that. Or we both have new cameras or something like that. Yeah. Because yep. the last time, <laughs> there was one time when we both had full-frame Nikons. Yes, that was the last time. Yeah, that was the last time, and that's the only time. Yep, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because you don't have your Nikon anymore. Yeah, you, you had the D800, I had the D850. Yeah. That's right. Yep. But the next time, you'll have the X-T3, and there is no shame in that, X-T3. my friend. It's, it's a beast That'd of a be camera. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be fun to test. I figure the one of the best ways to review a camera, at least for me, is uh, a, a trip to <laughs> Disney World because I take a really yeah. help, healthy balance of – Family photos and then like my quote professional like you know night long exposures of the parks and then I do a lot of video on there so I'll I'll definitely over uh, the week I'm there I'm gonna figure out a lot about the camera that I do and don't like and I'm just gonna be taking notes the whole week so I can form an actual review when I get back but it's it's gonna be fun to use I mean to have a full frame that small and light in the park is going to be awesome because I normally never, crazy. yeah, I never took my D850 or my D810 because it was just always so heavy and clunky. I always took the X-T2. So I'll finally get a full frame yeah. in Disney for about the same weight. And I'm, yeah, I'm excited about that. Are you going to be doing any type of specific pictures while you're there? Um, yeah. I usually always have a mission. Yeah, I know. I was, yeah. The, my mission last time was getting video for the Disney course. Yeah. That I'm yeah. Doing. yeah. So I, I, this time, um, I think I'm going to try to do more, I'm going to try to do more daytime long exposures. Oh, so I always do good. nighttime with no people there. I'm, yeah. going to, I'm going to try to do – I'm going to bring my filter kit, which I never have done before, and I'm going to do yeah. some daytime super long exposures to see if I can get some daytime photos with no people in it. Because oh, wow. if I do like a, a two-minute, three-minute exposure with a filter and people are walking the whole time, it's going to look like I'm there in the day by myself. Really? Yeah. And, let, and of course, accounting for a couple of people that are just standing still the whole time. But if yeah, people yeah. are just walking through an area the whole time, they're just going to they're just gonna blur on a two- or three-minute exposure. Sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try a few of those. And then there's so many little details in theme parks, especially especially the Disney parks. Yeah, like Disney. all the little, like, hidden Mickeys and all these little, like, quotes from Walt and all these little plaques everywhere. Uh, I want to try to get some, some detail, like close-up shots instead of my always my big wide castle shots and the big yeah. Hollywood studios and Star Wars stuff. Um, Toy Story Land was really cool. Uh, yeah, I'll be using. I, I think I, I'm I'm planning that that's the only camera I'm going to take. So oh okay yeah I think I'm just I think I'm just going to pair that 24 to 70 with the A7R and just go with it. Yeah, that covers your wide range. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's my versatile lens and the. Um, the lens, the 24 to 70, has the uh, optical stabilization, and Ooh, the nice. A7R has in-body stabilization. Gosh. So yeah, so I'll be double stabilized. I'll be fine to do 
lower light stuff. Um, I mean, if it's golden hour even, and I'm shooting it like, you know, 30th, 20th of a second, I'll just handhold it. I won't even need a tripod. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be Jeez, fun. That'd be crazy. You're going to have to send me some of those pictures like you always do. Yes, definitely. As you're working on them. Yes. And I'll, I'll let you know, uh, too, so we can go ahead and get some notes for the next show, too, what, uh, what I really did and didn't like about it. Because I know there's going to be some stuff where I'm like, ooh, I want to I wanna go into the bracketing settings, and it's going to take like 30 minutes to dive through the menu system to find it. <laughs> Yeah, because there's not a well, there's still not a bracketing button on this camera, which is so upsetting for me. I know because on my Fuji, I can just go t- click click click, and I yeah. change over to the bracket settings. That's right. Although I did that yesterday, I was doing some bracketing outside on our campus and taking some pictures, and I realized that I didn't change the stops of the bracketing, so I just oh, bracketed yeah. three pictures of the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so I just have three <laughs> pictures awesome. of the exact same thing. Yeah. And I was like, dang it, I completely forgot to. Yeah change you, that well, and with the fuji too since you have the exposure comp dial right there you can also do it manually yeah. if you want it which is super quick and i think uh, this one has uh yeah this one has the exposure comp dial right there there you go at yeah. your thumb so you could technically just go to three stops and then back to zero and three stops under um, well, i need a tripod yes you would definitely need a tripod for that for i sure. still don't have a tripod yet yeah man we got to get you a tripod yeah, I know. We're gonna, if any if anybody's watching, any tripod companies listening, just by chance, like some dude that's a huge fan of us at like I don't know, even some random Benro, Chinese company yeah, from some, Amazon. Yeah, who knows? Then yeah, just, just send it. Joseph a tripod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, but you know, you're a portrait guy mainly, so that's why I mean, you yeah, never really, it is. never really. Need, I mean, it'd be kind. Of, I'd be every time I've done a portrait shoot or or been around one, it'd be kind of weird. Like I was just following us around with this big tripod. Yeah, massive. <laughs> yeah, that that no. one guy that sets up with his film camera and takes like forty five minutes to get set up for one oh shot. Gosh. <laughs> of course, I've wanted to get a little bit better at landscape, though. Yes. Yes. And so, if you don't have a tripod, landscapes like oh man, gotta have just a tripod. Don't, just don't even do it because with the tripod, you can really set it up. You can set it down. You can really compose your shot. You can be very intentional. Because before, I've not been able to do that. So yes, I've and just been running gun. Especially, cause we typically always go to some kind of waterfall. And man, with waterfalls, you gotta oh, have yeah. a tripod, especially if you oh, do yeah. the longer yeah. water. Yeah, it's it's a must. All right. Well, yeah. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm gonna try this Sony out. Sony's that. You know, you love it or you hate it kind of thing. So I'm going to see which one I end up at, or if I end up in the one percent of the gray area people. I guess we'll find out. I and you had the A7R2, right? I did. I had the A7R2 for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I and you had problems with it the, wasn't overheating, was it? No, it, it was wasn't the, overheating. It was that the whole astrophotography or something. Yeah, every time I would do a long exposure and the the long exposure noise reduction, everything was turned off. So every time I would do a long exposure that was past like 30 seconds, so like. 45 seconds, a minute, two minutes, it would just say processing on the screen. It would just, it would just have to like do, do something internal in the camera before it showed me a preview. And I had, I checked so, like I checked every time, the long exposure noise reduction was always turned off. There was nothing that would make it do that. I even called the Sony tech support and they were like, oh, oh well, uh, you know, it could be something with the software. Uh, you can reinstall the firmware or something. So I did that. It didn't help. Uh, and yeah. then I, I also had the Sony A7 Mark II at the time because those are my two cameras, and oh, yeah, that did the right. exact same thing. So I was just like, all right, clearly this is way more of a computer than a camera is what I was thinking at the time. Yeah. So I just ditched it and went back to Nikon, and I was so happy. Um, yeah. Yeah, but, it, I mean, it seems like they've fixed that now. So yeah, I'm, like... yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to having a full frame of Disney and seeing what this thing, how big of a punch so, this thing packs. question. Yes. If you really like this, oh, here we go. <laughs> are you gonna move to Sony? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no, okay. No. I'm, I'm too, I'm, I'm too invested in the Nikon glass, and I'm yeah, so yeah. happy with my D850 that even if I liked it, there would just be no reason. You know, what I mean, like it. Yeah. The biggest reason people are always like, like I. I just it gets on my nerves honestly, and it's when people are like, "Oh yeah, I've uh, been shooting Nikon and Canon for a long time, but I switched to Sony because it's just so lightweight, and they have like a 400 millimeter lens on it." I'm like, "Dude, yeah, what are no. you talking about? Like, you, you, I would never make a full camera brand switch just because I can like shed like half a pound. You know, that's just yeah. yeah if so, you go to Fuji, that's one thing because yeah, it's that's a big smaller. That's right. The lenses are smaller. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, so, even the lenses. But, I mean, that especially like all the f2, the 35, 23 f2s, yeah, you can literally stick. Awesome. Those in your pocket, yeah, yeah, those are great. Yeah, but even this twenty-four to seventy, this isn't even the big one. This is the smaller one, and this is still a pretty chunky lens. So, yeah. but it's going to be way better for Disney World to have a, a lighter weight lens like that. Uh-huh. But it's still not 
you know, when you look at it up against the D850, it's not that much lighter. It's not like, oh my gosh, no. this is amazing. I'm going to switch to Sony. Yeah, so no. even even if I love it, I'm not going to switch to Sony. I just still, it, it's one of those reliability things. Like, I use Apple computers because I just know that they're reliable and they always have been for me. So the same thing, like, even if I got a PC that was like a, you know, a 12 gig graphics card and eight core processor and it was so fast, I still wouldn't use it as my main computer because I just don't trust them enough. They're not reliable enough to me with my experience to where I would, you know, trust it's my main machine. Yeah, Windows. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's and not just say... that. You've got that awesome Zeiss lens on your Nikon. Oh my gosh. The 20, that beautiful. The 21 millimeter Milvis lens, the 2.8. That's a gorgeous, oh, gorgeous lens. It's so good. And it, it, I have shot in like the worst possible backlighting situations, and there is not one hint of chromatic aberration ever on that lens. It's, I, oh, it's just so good. Do you think I could adapt that to my? <laughs> uh, yeah, they, I think it would be manual, obviously, because it's a manual, manual lens. But yeah, it, uh, I think they have some cheap Nikon to to uh, X mount adapters. I'm sure they do. Yeah, we got to do that. Yeah, the uh, I think it's a company called Photodiox that that makes that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those yeah. there. Yeah, Pretty so good. we can we can definitely do that because that that lens is just so good. Oh, now it weighs awesome. like probably more than the D850. It's a heavy lens. Golly. <laughs> yeah, it's huge, uh, but it's so good. So yeah, you know it's and, and like the Sony lenses, the Sony Zeiss lenses, they're not like the real Zeiss lenses like that. They're, they're Sony Zeiss approved that's, lenses. That's right. They're Sony rebranded yeah. Zeiss lenses. Yeah. So it's like when you see like a Zeiss lens on like a phone, and they're like, that's... "Dude, it's a Zeiss lens." And like, yeah. no, it's a Zeiss approved. That's right. So that you can they use that take fancy twenty percent of every sale. <laughs> that's right. That means they get. The money and they get to use you get to use the blue yeah. the blue badge exactly yep so yeah i'm uh so. I'm, I'm curious to see what it's what it's going to be like even if i love it you know i'm not going to switch right now sure maybe in the next 10 years five years if they do something unbelievable and kick nikon's butt i'll i'll take a look but yeah, yeah i'm a nikon you probably guy. would go to the z7 before you went to the a7 III because you could just keep all your lenses that's right definitely i'm i'm so invested in nikon glass it just it just wouldn't make sense if i sold them right now i would lose so much money on everything they're just it and that's what's sense. so important for them doing mirrorless is that now if you're going to switch they're like well if you're going to go mirrorless let's at least keep them in the nikon family and yes, so exactly yeah so i, I would definitely yeah, I don't know. I just think I, something tells me I'm just going to be Nikon until I die. Like, I'll always have another system to play around with, but I'm just a Nikon guy. <laughs> yeah. I love their dynamic range and their sensors. They're, well, it's their yeah. Sony sensors, sure. Yeah, I know. But Well, that's where Sony's making all the money. They make, like, everyone sensors. Oh, I know. But, yeah, I don't know. I love the Nikon stuff. So, uh, what do you want to cover for the last topic? You know, do you want to talk about what's up with... Just randomly with micro four thirds. Yeah, sure. Because we don't have a lot of news, but it's like so with all these mirrorless. Kind of the first real mirrorless, weren't they? Were they um, uh, micro four thirds? Weren't they uh, one of the first I, ones? Yeah, I think so. I think I think it. I want to say. It I was think I saw on some Olympus. website. It was like the yeah. I think it was like the um, anniversary of ten years ago or something like that. It mm -hmm. was like the first mirrorless camera. So at this point, we heard Panasonic's working on a full frame. Yep. So where does that leave Micro Four Thirds as far as a I don't a system goes? It, they, micro Four Thirds confuses me because every time I think that nobody uses them, all of a sudden I'll I'll see like every video guy in the world now go for the the Panasonics, the GH GH fours, oh, yeah. GH fives, and a lot of that is I guess the the weight and the lenses or whatever, and they do have the full tilty flippy screens. From what I hear, they don't have really good video autofocus. Uh, but if you're serious at video, you just mainly do manual anyway. Yeah, you do manual. Um, yeah. But my guess is you can get in the field, at least, that DSLR feel where you can get better depth of field with the lenses with a slightly mm -hmm. with a larger sensor than your one-inch sensors like your video camera, like your camcorders. Right. And you can get it with that same um, record time as a camcorder where you can do like a four or five hour recording without that 29 yeah. minute limit on the DSLRs. That's where a lot of people, because a lot of people that record like these video courses in the field and photography courses, they use the Panasonics because they can do like a 30 or 40 minute lesson, just straight recording without having oh, to yeah. break. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a, a key. And then I, as far as other features, I just, I don't know. I mean, I know that they have IBIS built in the Panasonic yeah. ones. Um, I don't know about the 4K60. I'm assuming the GH5 or 5S probably has all that. I'm, I've heard they're good at low light, uh, but I don't. I don't know. Micro Four Thirds still just kind of confuses me. I don't know how it's making enough money to exist, still. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, Olympus has some really good looking. They do. Cameras, they look very, like that kind of retro feel that Fuji has. And mm-hmm. they're t- they're teeny tiny. I mean, if you really want to shed weight from a DSLR, Micro Four Thirds would really shed a ton of weight. But you're missing so much background blur and depth of field. Yes. And I guess technically not depth of field. You still have depth of field, but you won't get that background blur. Yeah. Because you'd have to have like a 1.4 aperture just to get like a 2.8 or something <laughs> like that. That's right. So it, yeah, I don't it, know. It's I, definitely not not the way I would see a portrait photographer going because of that sensor no. size. You you probably gain um, the lightweight, the portability, everything that you think a mirrorless is supposed to be. But yeah, you. Oh, it's just I don't know. I I feel like I want to have this answer, but I'm just confused by it. No, I would assume that wildlife photographers might be interested in it because of the cropped sensor. Yes. You can have a hundred millimeter, and it'd be a two hundred millimeter lens, and a two hundred millimeter lens would be a four hundred millimeter equivalent. So, yes, that would probably uh, be pretty. And nice. I've now that you said that, I want to say that there was a panasonic maybe at olympus the, because of the smaller sensor size you don't have to feed so much information to a larger sensor i think the folk i think the frames per second you can shoot has always been like 14 or 20 or even 30 like oh, you can yeah. shoot a lot but again i don't know how good the focus is i don't i've never really paid attention enough to know if it's good autofocus or not for wildlife yeah. or sports or other. i mean i definitely know there's no way that there's some guy you know shooting NFL sports or Major League Baseball sports shoot using Micro Four Thirds. There's just no way. No, they all have up. those massive lenses that you see yep. <laughs> with like the little monopods. And that's right. They all have so. Nikon D fives and Canon One D Mark Two or One D X Mark Twos, and then the four hundred yeah. millimeter primes, all that. And I I have seen some people on TV recently with Sony's. So I have. I was gonna I, say A nines. Yeah. yeah, I've seen Sony start to break into that free field. and their buffer where they can take like. 40,000 photos in a row That's without right. buffering or something yes. like that. Now, those, granted, those it's sports like photographers, they're wearing oven mitts while they're holding the A9, uh, shooting you know. with it. But, uh, you know, it, but keep, it keeps them safe. So it keeps them safe. Safety is important. That's true. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think Micro Four Thirds, personally, is, is right now is a bit of a dying breed. <laughs> Especially with Panasonic going full frame. It's yeah. like you just have Olympus sitting there. I know. And, I mean, they've got... I guess if somebody was like, hey, I really want to get into photography, but I don't want to spend a lot of money. I'm not very serious, and I, but I want to be able to have different lenses and understand that system, then you maybe would be able to suggest, like, an, you can get them an old Olympus OMD EM10 or something like that for, yeah. like, $300. Definitely. And the lenses are fairly cheap, and they'll at least understand how to use a camera. Yes. So that's at least one yeah, that's thing. That's true. I would definitely recommend that over the, the faithful Canon T3i that everybody recommends as your first <sighs> man, camera. That's just a gold standard. <laughs> it for is. I don't get DSLRs, it. DSLRs, man. Yep. Gosh. Yeah, and, so, I, uh, and I want uh, Olympus to succeed more because I like the look of their cameras. They're. I wanted they're awesome. it was a, there was one was it the LX something LX100 or something the LX100 it's Panasonic. Oh it's Panasonic. Okay yeah. So yeah. that one has always intrigued me every time you've sent me yeah. links to that that you've been looking at I was like wow that actually I does have got a it. Yeah, I was like man that actually does have a lot of specs for the money. Yeah. Yeah. It just and, came out with Mark II of that. Yeah, and it's got that cool like rangefinder style feel. Yeah. You know, I, I I like it. So yeah, I mean I I don't know the the technology has always been easier for them because they don't have to feed so much information to a larger sensor. So they have that smaller sensor. They can they can come out with the better tech sooner. And it's not as hard on the processing engines and all that. But I don't know. I, I don't think I, – well, I guess it makes you wonder if when Panasonic goes full frame, are they just kind of slowly going to forget about their four-thirds line? Yeah, I'm wondering if they're reading the tea leaves and they're just thinking mm-hmm. the future is not micro four-thirds. Uh, yeah, and that's what so, I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, it's it'll be interesting to see because – Hopefully they'll announce their full frame in the next, you know, month or so. Yeah. Um, I mean, gosh, it. I, I don't know what they could possibly. I don't even know what lens mount they're gonna do because they have no lenses. Man, I don't know. And at, there was a rumor at one point they were gonna use a Leica. Um, oh, gosh. What was that? ML or CL oh, the, or whatever. There. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know what you're talking about that. The... But then it's like, then you're going from. They're like, oh well, you can mount Leica lenses on there. Oh, good, because those are affordable. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you it's go like, for the the, Le- the Leica Noct Deluxe or whatever, yeah, it's only like eight yeah. grand for a for a thirty five millimeter lens. It's not a big deal. I mean, my dream camera is a Leica M rangefinder. I've always wanted to have a Leica M rangefinder because they're just <laughs> gorgeous. 
<laughs> I mean, they're just amazing. Yep. But um, because you like know. overpaying for sexy cameras. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. Yep. Like oh, they're just so great. In fact, one of the guys I follow on YouTube recently. He's, uh, what is it, Three Blind Men and an Elephant? Yes, they're, I've seen them. Yeah, yeah. They're cool. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he is. He shot like all Leica, and now he shoots Fuji. Uh-huh. And it's because it has the same feel of his Leica. But he's, he talked a little bit about his Leica, and he's like, I love the way he talks about it. You know, like it's like, you know, he's one of those photographers that talks. It's like a love story, you know. And yes. About it's like how it feels and the way <laughs> that you shoot it and the way it makes you, you know. I don't like that. So, yeah. But, he was showing one of the Leicas he had, and I'm like, man, that's just, just feels like it was carved from like one. It's like if App were to make a camera, it would probably be like, well, I mean, Johnny, I did make Johnny a camera. He made, did, a Leica, he made a Leica. <laughs> sold for like eight kajillion dollars or something like that. Yep. So, yeah, that's my dream. But yeah, so the Panasonic, I don't know if it comes out and they have like three or four good lenses. I could see if the Panasonic came in full frame at like seventeen hundred. Yeah. Then that would really shake things up. Yeah. Except that their GH5 is like, what, 1500 uh, so. Yes, that was correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's going to be know. tough. Especially That'd since you can you can shave 100 bucks off of that and get the X-T3 yeah, and get right. the APS-C sensor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. Going on your dream camera, I'm just trying to think of what... I would probably want to go for the Phase 1 IQ system. Yeah, the I mean, I would want to do The big 100 megapixel like medium format. Yeah. <laughs> That would be that would be insane. <laughs> insane. Yep. We could go out and I could shoot with that with my touch screen and you'd be like manually focusing with your Leica M and you would have still oh, paid yeah. more for more than me. <laughs> I'll be shooting in black and white. That's right. That's all because that's all you could do. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yep. Oh, but man, it would feel so awesome though. It would. It would feel so awesome to oh, spend gosh. ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh man. Maybe I'll try. I'm, that's my goal. So if I start a YouTube channel, which I want to start, my goal for the YouTube channel will be to partner with Leica. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you should just you should awesome. just reach out to them right when you start it. All right, look, I'm I have a send I them have an a proposal every week. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you should. Just should they they Seriously, always have my videos have gotten box. better. Yeah. Just just watch them. <laughs> I've gotten a lot better. You just should just send them a report of your channel every week. This week plus <sighs> two subscribers. Guys, <laughs> plus one subscriber. Now. I have oh, eighteen awesome. channel views, guys. Come on. <laughs> Next week I have thirty oh, channel man. views. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, I mean they, they that, they'd probably do it. That'd be great if they're like, just send him a freaking camera, so he'll stop emailing us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, I'll send him a like a cure. Man, that'd be crazy. Because they just came out with the MT M10P. Did you see that? No. What? So it's a Leica M10 rangefinder, it but it's got like a nearly silent shutter. A nearly silent shutter? Yeah, like like the actual mechanical shutter is like nearly, you almost can't hear it, which is sort of like most. Oh, here we go. I type cameras. in Leica M10P on Google and Kai is the first person that comes yeah, up. Yeah, he, yeah, he, of course, they invited Kai. Yep. Okay, so, interesting. Yeah. Like an M10P. I like the, the back of their M10s because they look, they're just so minimal. They know? are very very, very. And that's at, least, that's at least, the M10 is at least, the M rangefinders, that's like their, you know, that's their big camera. Mm-hmm. So that at least that has nice features, good, you know, because when they do like their, you know, their lower end Leicas, you know, for like, you know, the cheap $4,000 or something like that, they're always crap. Yeah. It's like, it's like you can just buy a Fuji and it's 10 times better than that. But the Leica M's are actually really, really good quality. Let's see. Oh, sweet mother. $8,000. Yep. <laughs> it looks so tiny. And it has such a small screen. Why? I know. I don't know. Gosh. Because it's not about crazy. the screen. It's not right? about it. <laughs> it's about the it's name about the on the screen. front. Leica. Gosh. Which they actually took off the red Leica I just, on oh, the yeah. M10P, what? I think. What? I don't know if it was on the M10 or the M10P, I think. But they took off yeah, the red Yeah, they took Leica. it off in the M10P. Oh, because yeah. because it's in the eight thousand dollar price range instead of the ten thousand, so they can't they, right. they can't give you that their rare ink. They don't want people to look at that piece of crap and attribute <laughs> it to Leica. That's right, man. It just, they look so they're they're very minimal. That is for sure. They are. That's what I love about it. What's the sensor size on that? Is it it's a full, full frame. frame? Okay. Wow. Oh yeah. That's crazy, man. Oh no. I wonder. I want. I want to meet the people who buy these. I want to meet the people who who literally sit here and while everyone's waiting for Canon and Nikon and Fuji, they're like. Tch. I'm just gonna get the Leica when it comes out. <laughs> oh, Eight man. grand on a Fuji f- on a full frame? Why not? Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Well, any other 
uh, last topic? Oh, we or? have a Facebook group. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'll let you give the spiel so on So we wanted to have some place where we could talk to people and have a little bit of a community. And so we have a Facebook group. If you go to Facebook and search Burst Mode Podcast, it should come up with our little logo and everything. It's a closed group, but you can, anyone can join it. And so you can join it, and we'll just see how many people start joining it. And we can just talk about cameras, talk about photography, talk about if you're trying to make up your mind on what camera you want to get. Yeah. You know, that's that's what we're here for, and that's what everyone else is there for. So we can just talk about things, yeah. show pictures, and maybe you can post pictures from Disney or something like that. Yeah, or, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll hang out yeah. on there. We can even do, eventually, we'd love to do, like, some some facebook yeah some live streams to the group just exclusive yeah, stuff awesome. to the group and then like some facebook group critiques where we all kind of get yeah, around yeah, and do yeah. some critique photo yeah i mean we want to make it a super cool fun community yeah so yeah and anyone that's listening or watching let's go over there and join that so we can get that started because anywhere any anytime you take multiple photographers and and put them into one place there's always just good things happen and like if, yeah. as long as yeah as long as every, everyone's nice that's that's the only rule just be nice yeah doesn't matter what your yeah, suit canon not... nikon this isn't a gear war thing just be nice it's, it's always yeah. fun to have a bunch of creative people in one place because cool things always happen so yeah exactly. it'll be fun it's just a group for fun all right cool well uh anything else you good I'm good. I think so. Let's wrap it up. All right. Well, cool. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this week's episode of Burst Mode, and we'll see you guys in the next one.